This coffee is delicious. Hi, Melinda. Good morning. Hey, girl. Hey. Good morning. How is everybody doing? Good morning. Good morning. My I, I can hear dishes being put away, and it's like a symphony of husband porn as my husband empties the dishwasher. Clank, giddy, clank, 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 giddy, clank, 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 clank. I love it. Thanks, Joyelle. Y'all like the braids? Well, first of all, good morning and welcome to Coffee Talk. Where are my manners? Second of all, I love the braids. I've been braiding my long hair like this for a very long time. My husband hates the braids. He's like, I don't get it. He goes, it looks like you're braiding your hair so you can put a wig on. <laughs> I'm like, that's not nice. It does kind of look like that, but. Y'all. I just meant, okay. So, ah! Listen, I am making the only mess right now. Okay, yeah, let me check out the braids. I don't know if you could see that, but they're kind of falling out right here because I slept on them. But I love braids. I I just love braids. I always have. My mom did not know how to braid, so like I would have one ponytail literally and one like braid down here. Um, my friend Kristen, who I love, the one who said about the turkey jerky, it's delicious. She uh, is a dope hairstylist. And she came to my office yesterday and I was like, hook a sister up. Um, háblame, cántame, besame mucho. Uh, yeah, seriously, hold on, Michael. Hold on. Like a... This one's coming out because I slept on it. Because I sleep on this side. But whatevs. Um, all right, so how's everybody doing this morning? And if you're in Australia this evening, um, oh, she starts braiding from right here. And Robin Floyd, you meant coffee or did you, meet, did you mean coffee? Because I'm not sure what's happening to the word coffee in this country right now. But that's none of my business. Yeah, I really do love braids. You know, when I wear these braids in my hair, I feel more authentically me. Like really, I feel like, probably because I feel like I can fight. You see, this is a mental thing, guys. This is a mental thing. That's why I tell you, old Jamie is alive and well. Because literally, I got my hair braided and I was walking with Charlie yesterday and I felt myself bowing up on people like, what? What? Like people that didn't move out of our way quick enough. And I was like, yo, Jamie, relax with the braids. What's the matter with you? Uh, what's the matter for you? Um, my grandmother used to sing that song to me. What's the matter you? Why are you looking so sad? Um, so, couple of things. Uh, I hope that by now you have been able to see that uh, my first movie was, well, this isn't really my first movie that's been announced in the trades. Um, oh, Steph, you girl, you ain't never lie. Okay, that is like the... Anyway, we're going to talk about that later. Okay, um, this is the first movie that's been announced in the trades of mine that's actually going to film, right? Um, we start shooting. Uh, Gabrielle starts going into stunt training, I think, uh, early July. The office, the pre-production office in LA opens June 5th. Um, and we, um, we, we start shooting breaking in July 16th. So I'm going to fly to LA, I think on July 14th and, uh, I'll be there the whole first week of shooting. So I'll send you guys, you know, I can post stuff on like, um, Instagram stories and stuff like that and I'll get one of like me and Gab's um, but it was such a cool process to go through 
really such a cool process. Oh, thank you, Cindy Walker. So uh, such a cool process to go through. So the next announcement, most likely, if if they are announced the way they should be, um, Rebecca Doyle's 24 and watches us, folks, blows my mind. At 24, I was definitely not listening to what some 40-year-old woman had to say. I was like, I know everything better than you do. There's a song that goes, I can do anything better than you can. Um, and that was basically my theme song. Okay, but anyway, so the next movie uh, announcement that should come out is called Oracle. And then after that, if God is good, which I know he is, let me sip on that. Oh, Tina, you know I got my hoops, girl. Brittany's 23. Yo, this is blowing my mind. Um, will be John 316. So, um... And that, then I'm I'm taking another one in to uh, them in July called Beast, and you guys are gonna love it. I love scary movies. Ah! Okay. Um. So, so I want to tell you the way I changed thinking about myself. Okay. When I first started pitching movies. Because here's the thing, you know I was a publicist, Caitlin is 21, I'm sorry, Caitlin at 21, like the fact that you even pay attention to me blows my mind. Like I almost wanna take you out and buy you a drink. Linda, Richdale, I love that you're gonna be 70. Don't ever leave me, cause I find you. Um, all right, you know I was a, a publicist, um, pitching other people was easy for me. I could sell anybody anything as long as it wasn't my own stuff, right? When I started pitching my own projects, fear is fear. Do you know how much fear lies to us? Fear comes in to our mind and fear says, it'll never be you. Why would it be you? when there are so many other people doing the same thing, people with more experience, people with whatever, like why would it be you, Jamie, or Simona, or Afton, right? So fear a lot of times will get the best of us. Fear will tell you you're not good enough. Fear will actually See, fear was originally created by the creator to protect us from dangerous situations like this. I'm walking through the jungle, trying to kill food so I could feed my family. I hear a growl. I'm afraid. I'm going to run away from the bear. That is what fear was created for. Fear was not created to stop us from living our best life. Fear was not created to stop us from loving. Fear was not created to walk it to stop us from walking into Will Packer's office and going, "Bruh, I got a great movie for you and you should hear this." Fear was not created to stop us from making new friends or starting a digital series called Coffee Talk even though your husband said nobody would ever listen to it cuz your accent was terrible. <clears throat> Boy, was he wrong. Huh? So, Fear was created by the creator to protect us from the environment, fire, animals, things like that. But as we progressed as human beings, we took fear with us and fear went, I don't know what to do. So I'm just, fear couldn't keep up with technology. So fear took over. It's, it's trying to protect us from everything because it doesn't know it's like, wait a minute, uh, we're way past fire and bears, guys. We're way past fire and bears, right? So fear's like, well, I'm just gonna try to stop you from doing everything. This way, nothing can ever happen to you, right? Fear is basically my mother. I just realized it. Fear has become my nagging Italian Jewish mother who doesn't ever want me to do anything ever, okay? Not because she doesn't love me, but because she loves me. That is fear, right? So I started feeling like, I'll use Will Packer as an example. I started feeling like, why would somebody like Will Packer, who has a 
plethora of movies and a plethora of writers and a plethora of all these things. Listen to me. And I'm white. I mean, at least I think I am. I don't feel that way, but I look that way. Why would he listen to me? And then I started to lie to fear. I was like, if fear can lie to me, I'm going to lie back to fear, right? I'm going to say to fear, why not me? Why not me? Real talk. Why not me? What if he says no? And? And? What will happen? Will my husband love me any less? Will my Will I have less value to my children? Will I, will, will the creator love me any less? Will, I, will the, my light shine less? Like what will happen if I am rejected? I walked into Russell Simmons' house. Now, for those of you who know me, you know that hip hop is life for me, especially classic hip hop, which is where Russell Simmons basically sits in a shrine, okay? Um, they said, Jamie, we're sending you to Russell Simmons' house. Not Jamie Russell Simmons is gonna call you, which still would have tripped me out. Not Jamie Russell Simmons is going to FaceTime you, which still would have blown my mind. But Jamie, you're gonna drive through the streets of Los Angeles, pull up to his house, knock on the door, walk in like you own the place, and basically hang out with Russell Simmons for three hours to pitch a movie. I was like, uh, I literally got out of the car and had one of those Jim Carrey talk conversations with myself. Girl, I don't know if you could do this. Girl, you better get in there and do this. I don't know that I can. How do I speak to him about anything but hip hop? How do I speak to him about anything but Def Comedy Jam? Like, what if I try to speak and all I could do is go like this, Def Comedy Jam. He's going to be like, this girl is tripping. So I had to turn back around and go, no, stay focused. You know what you're here to do. Just be yourself. He's going to love you. Be yourself, right? Russell meets people who try to impress Russell all the time. So just be you. Okay, Russell also meets way cooler people than me. So why? don't be yourself. Be something else. No, just be yourself. This was me outside his house. By the way, he was probably like, who is this white girl in the street outside of my house legit talking to herself? 100% talking to herself because I was doing this. Okay. Okay. And then I did it. I said, all right, pinch yourself. Why not me? Why not me? Maybe the reason that I'm standing here in front of Russell Simmons house is because it is me. Right? If God brings you to it and I, ugh, I try not to make it about God. Okay, Jamie, do better. If the, if the decisions that you have made in your life thus far have brought you to it, is it not possible that that is your path, that that is your journey? Can you not trust that you have been brought to that very spot because that is exactly where you are meant to be? Because you are the only one that can finish it, Arthur, right? I just made that up, but it sounded like it could be from King Arthur, didn't it? You're welcome, okay? So anyway, I'm totally like, Taylor's going to kill me when he listens to this coffee talk and tries to find a clip for Instagram because he's going to be like, girl, you are all over the place, right? Dawn, I'm with you here. Dawn, I get it. I have been paralyzed by fear from a mother who told me that I cannot go in the ocean past my knees because 100% a sand shark is waiting to kill me. My mother told me that scented tampons would burn the inside of my vagina out and I'm 40 and I still believe it. I still believe it. When someone hands me a scented tampon, I go, why does this girl want the inside of my vagina to burn? No, I will not use that, Satan. No. Okay? Back to Russell Simmons. I walk up. I knock on the door. Now, this is a long stretch of the Russell I knew from, from Brooklyn or Bronx, whatever. Because I knock on the door and dude got Buddhas everywhere. He's, he is legit like, um, what is it called? Um, meditate, meditating or whatever. So hear me out, Dawn. I'm talking right directly to you, okay? 
So I w walk into his house and I'm like, okay, I'm not the Zen girl. So let me just, whatever. I had to find something. So fear was basically like, oh my God, get out of here, get out, abort mission. I was sweating in my armpits. I was shaking. So his assistant leads me outside. He's outside, like in the direct sun. So I'm like, oh, this will be cute while I'm sweating like a hog, right? Um, and we start talking and I hear that voice. Russell Simmons has a very distinct voice. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm tripping right now, right? In my mind. And so finally, I'm like, why not me? Why not me? Why not me? So I just legit cut, not cut the cheese. I almost said cut the cheese. That would have been awful. I just cut the tension. I said, you know, Russell, I'm such a fan. So I had to like do a like check outside to like check myself about coming in here. But then I remembered that you're a, a lifetime Yankees fan and I'm a lifetime Yankees fan. And I figured if nothing else goes well for me today, we could talk about what a brilliant institution the Yankees are. And he was like, guard down. That's my people. And he was like, what you know about the Yankees? And I was like, oh my God. So that was it, right? But my point is that I had to convince myself, why not me? Maybe, just maybe, fear is wrong. That is the point of all of this storytelling because clearly I gotta, have, I gotta find one, right? Because I've been talking now for 16 minutes. What if fear is wrong? Why do we always assume that fear is right? Why do we always assume that doubt is right. What if it's wrong? We go through our life and we look at our situations and fear and doubt creep in and they start lying to us and we always assume they're right. Always. Do not allow liars to paralyze you and derail you from what you have been called to do. If it keeps nagging at you and it, it keeps tugging at you, it's because it is your calling. That is what you are meant to pursue. Do not la allow liars like fear and doubt to derail you. Remember what I told you? You are standing in the middle of my path to success and I need you to get off, right? Because you cannot block the blessings that were meant for me. And fear and doubt are the worst haters. They will come out of nowhere. And listen, I get it. They were created to protect us. So I totally get it, but they need to get in where they fit in because they're trying to jump into every situation and be in everybody's business and whatever. And no, that's not how it works. You need to check them, like check them to the back seat of your life. Like I get it, fear and doubt. You're looking out for me. I get it, but I need you to get to the back and you need to give why not me shotgun. That's what you need to do. You need to give, why not me? I was built for this. I can do this. You need to give them shotgun. Because, because you deserve to live the life that you were created to deserve. In fact, we need you. Let me, let me explain this to you. We need you to live the life that you were designed and built to live. Because you were created to be outstanding and to do outstanding things. And there are people who are depending you to fulfill those missions. Think about the man who found penicillin. What if he was afraid to get in that lab, to mess with that cheese, whatever he did to find the penicillin? Legitimately, what if he was too afraid? Think about that, what that would mean for, for urinary tract infections, right? You have been called to do great things because what you have been called to do, it may not be about you. It may be about somebody else. I was afraid to do coffee talk. Like who would, li who would listen to me? I don't know. But do you know how many people have been impacted and affected by my calling? What if I was too afraid? What if I woke up tomorrow and was like, nobody's listening. They think I'm crazy. I can't do this anymore. Right? No, it's not about me. Everything's not about us. Right? Sometimes what we have been called to do is about somebody else. Did you ever think that maybe Steve Jobs was meant to create the iPhone so that I could start Coffee Talk so that you could get over your fear and doubt? Hey, could be. Jurassic Park could happen. Right? 
Just saying. So I'm just telling you right now, why not you? Why not you? You're already on my team and my team's going to the top. Keep rising to the top. Uh. So you're already riding with me. You're already in my car. So it's your choice. You could sit in the back where I'm putting fear and doubt or you could come ride shotgun with me. That's your choice. Like Charlie says, what's your choice? Okay? Okay. I love you guys. I want everybody riding shotgun. That's what I'm talking about. All right. Now, hold on. Everybody's getting their hair braided. They're going to be like, some power nose braids. All I do is win, 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 no matter what. Um, so you just got to let me know. What do you choose? I'm taking you with me regardless. You coming with me regardless, right? So you tell me what do you choose? Are you riding in the back or do you call shotgun? The choice is yours. You could get with this or you could get with that. Oh, so cute. Um, if you want to ride shotgun with me, I got room for you. All right. I love you guys so much. Hands go up. <sighs> okay. How's that morning breath, bro? Um, all right. I love you guys so much. Look at all these people riding shotgun. This is what I'm talking about. Um, and if you are... Oh, now that we... Uh, you guys can come check me out on Instagram because uh, I feel like we're all fired up this morning. I feel like you guys can handle it. Don't be scared. Uh, Jamie P. Sullivan. Joyelle's going to put the link for me because she got me like that. I love you guys so much today. Have a great, great day.